Hey guys, welcome back. It's the next day and I have this last patch to make. I ground down the metal, the paint off the metal for now that I temporarily have put on there to keep it from rusting. I will sand it all off everywhere else once I get, um, or at least not maybe sand it all off, but scuff the metal up again. Um, I'm gonna cut a piece of uh, metal for there, a square piece, and then we'll start shaping it into place. I'm using 18 gauge rather than 16, so that's a little bit easier, and I'm gonna hopefully, maybe I can bend that uh, wheel lip there. So, all right, let me get a piece cut so you guys don't have to watch me cutting a piece of steel into a square, and then we will uh, start getting that to fit. Okay, I have the piece cut that uh, the uh, wheel skirt's kind of just barely up here because I don't have this front clip in. So I need to kind of just uh, hold it in place here and get an idea of the shape of it. Okay, I know it goes like that. This has a little bit of a curve to it. This bends down. That needs to bend that way. I need to put a little roll in it as well. So this is gonna be my wheel lip piece right here. So I'm going to see if I can't just bend this at a 90 degree. Problem is, is I need to probably have to make a relief cut right here. I'm going to make a cut right through there. Then we'll bend this straight and then we'll bend that one on an angle. So let me make a relief cut there. Okay. Let's see if we can just bend this on the vise because I'm not going to be able to do it on the bender. And it's okay if it's a little bit of a rolled edge because it, it kind of needs to be. and that we can weld together but keep in mind we need to put a bow in this a little bit so that actually might close up now i need to do is cut this here and fold this one down so let me go cut that again real quick okay now this bend is not going to go a full 90 degrees the reason why i use my vise for stuff like this is i can hang a piece of sheet metal off the edge the metal break you can't there's metal here so you can't hang it off the edge I'm sure they make other tools that you can do it, but I don't have that. So I pretty much make everything I need to make with a vise and a 36 inch metal break. From the metal breaks from Harbor Freight. It's not an expensive one at all, it's a couple hundred dollars. So we're gonna leave that like that because I don't want to bend it too much. I think it's gonna have to bend eh, let me bend it a little bit more. And I might have to cut it down. I think it's too long. That's probably too long. But let's go see if this fits at all once i get this piece done i'm ready to start mudding this thing up and getting it ready for primer Actually, that might not be too long. Look at that. Pretty darn good. All right, I'm pretty happy with how that's going to fit. So what I'm going to do is... this tacked in place need to tap that in a little bit right there 
grab a hammer. Almost forgot the weld through primer. Let me put some weld through primer on this and let it dry. Okay. Alright, I gotta cut this a little bit. It's hitting that top piece of metal. And then I'm going to go ahead and weld this in. And then we'll come back and we'll cut this wheel lip opening so that it matches the rest of the car. So I'm gonna do that part off camera. No point in me showing you once again how I weld these. Okay, that's all welded on. I ground all this down so that I can put my uh, fiberglass uh, filler on there. Um, I need to cut this back first. So I'm gonna kind of follow the same thickness as what's up here. cut through that back layer too and then I gotta put a couple tack welds in here alright little piece stuck on there I'll have to cut that a little bit more then I'm gonna grind this down tack those two together and then I'll be ready to start putting fiberglass filler on. Okay, so now what I did was I drilled three holes through here. Only through the outer piece, not the inside metal. I'm going to clamp them together, and then we're going to plug weld them. These clamps have seen better days. See how it brings out that other that piece that I had made on the back side. Alright. 
not much room to get it in there right there. All right, let me get that last one. The winds, I gotta wait for the wind to stop blowing. Okay, now that is connected to the inside. You can see my plug welds. We have one there, there, and there. Now it's nice and solid, it's not going anywhere. So now what I'm gonna do is off camera, I'm going to go ahead and put a coat of fiberglass filler over all the weld areas, make sure that it fills in any pinholes that have possibly been missed up here as well so i'm going to get these couple areas done and then i'll come back in a little while and we will start sanding okay i let all these areas dry for a little bit with the short strand fiberglass i'm going to go ahead and sand these down off camera and then i'm going to come back and we're going to start applying some filler into these two spots um, i put a coat on down there just to make sure everything's nice smooth and then we need to sand this stuff down which already has uh, filler on it I just never sanded it I just sprayed some epoxy primer over it so that it wouldn't uh, get any water or moisture into the filler so I'm gonna go ahead and do this off camera now I'm gonna come back we're gonna mix up some filler and start putting a coat on this and yes this whole bottom from here down it will have a coat of filler put on it all right I'm mixing up some uh, filler here so we can get a nice even coat on this I didn't sand the crap out of that short strand fiberglass just sanded it down enough to be able to go over it some guys i've seen not sand and go right over it when it's dry and i don't know that it would adhere right you gotta i would think you gotta rough it up a little bit Now all we're doing with this stuff is just uh, smoothing the body back out, just giving it its shape back that we uh, took out of it from welding. Sometimes it gets a little warped. This one didn't warp too bad, really. But I still like to put a coat on the whole area so that you have more to work with. And we'll probably have to do a second coat sand this one down which half more than half of it will get sanded off and we'll do another coat over top you can see right there is a low spot there's another little low spot right there I'm not going for perfect here just trying to visually look at it and see the shape you always want to make sure anywhere you put filler that you have a rough surface for it to grab to grab onto because if you don't it's just going to peel right off okay a little bit left for up here And I went past a little bit where I sanded, but that'll come off. That's not going to stay on there. Okay, now I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to go get my sander, and we're going to sand that other side that has that little bit of epoxy primer over top of it. Work on that while this is drying. I'll probably mix up one more batch and put it on that back area. And then we'll start sanding over there. Thank you. 
Okay, um, I have a new piece of 80 grit on my uh, sander mud buster. We're gonna go ahead and knock this down and see what it looks like. today the wind stopped blowing so you gotta make sure you wear your mask today i'll tell you that much it's going all over the place feeling too bad. That's actually feeling real good there. That's not bad. We have a high metal spot here. That's pretty bad there. That's a good 32nd of an inch higher than the mud. So that's got to get dealt with. Probably tap that in a little bit. We're low here a little bit. We're low over here a little bit. So um, I think what I'm going to do is grab my other sander real quick. All right, for some reason, this pad, the Velcro, is not really sticking anymore. I don't understand why. It's not even that old.
little high right here I could feel it I don't have any 80 grit for my round block I thought I did so I'm using 180 which is going to take me longer to cut it down I'm going to keep sanding with that off camera, but I want to see if I can tap this in first. I need my other hammer with a point. I'm going to go grab another hammer, and I'm going to keep tapping that in until it's in a little bit. And then I'm going to sand this down, and then we'll put one more coat, and we should be good after that. Okay, I'm sanding down this area now, this curve here. Just takes time. No fast way to do it. I'm going to continue to do this until it's feeling much better. Now, over here, there was some welds sticking up. So I ground them down a little bit farther. Now, if you look, this stuff is not very thick. Maybe eighth inch. So if people think that it's all wadded up with a ton of Bondo, it's really not. An eighth inch is nothing. Especially if you were to block sand and filler prime this a few times, you'd probably end up with close to the same thickness of build. Now, what I think I'm gonna do with this body is I was gonna primer the whole thing today, but I think it will be smart of me to epoxy and filler prime just the body worked areas first. Put like three coats on there. Let it dry for a day or two, block it down, and then I think I'm gonna do a whole coat on the whole body. Just because there's a lot more extensive body work on these quarter panels than was on the rest of the car. And I just think that uh, it'll turn out a little bit better if I hit it once, just the body work areas first, and block them down and see if anything else looks strange before I uh, filler prime the whole shell. So that's my goal, or that's my uh, plans now. So, all right, I'm gonna keep sanding that up there and I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, this is pretty good now. What this is, is the fiberglass showing through. This part of metal was a little higher, so I ground it down. So now I'm going to do one more coat on this area, that area, and down here needs a little bit. Because that was a little lumpy feeling, so I'm just smoothing that out. Um, I'm going to mix a little bit of my glazing putty with my filler. I'll show you here in a second. Okay, so what I'm doing is I took... My regular body filler, my glazing filler, or yeah, I think they call it glazing putty, and then my hardener. I'm mixing all three of these together at once. What this is going to do, this is going to make a little bit of a thinner consistency. It's going to make it sand a little bit easier. It's also going to give you less pinholes. The glazing putty doesn't tend to really give pinholes like filler can. But I'll tell you what, this filler, this Evercoat uh, gold premium filler uh it works pretty good it doesn't really seem to have pinholes some of those rage products i was using for a while man some of those were just had were full of pinholes when you uh mixed it and spread it when you sanded it you just found pinholes everywhere i don't know if other people have that problem or not but i quit using it and the simple fact that it's over a hundred dollars a gallon for some of that shit now and i'm not spending that kind of money I think this stuff is just as good. So now I want to try to be uh, a little bit more cautious about putting this on. I want to put it on a little bit smoother and nicer than what I have been doing. So let me get some on the panel here. Let's start really smoothing it out now. Especially in this top edge. If you, if you let the 
Bondo spreader form into it like that, you get yourself a nice crisp curve there with not having to do as much sanding then. And you have to work it. It's not, you're not going to just spread it on once and it's going to be good. So just get it on there first. It's cooler out today. It's only like 60. So this stuff's taking a little bit longer to dry, which is fine. It's giving me a little bit more work time. Let me put a little bit down here on the rocker. Probably right in the way of the camera. Get that curve. Good. I like the way that curve looks. Okay, that doesn't look too bad there. Same thing with this one. This flat surface I'm not doing any more on because it is getting a molding over it and it looks pretty good. We'll leave that like that and see how that turns out. Now I'm just gonna go put some down here. Just a real thin coat. There was definitely a little bit of body work done down here at some point. It's not rusty though. So I don't know if maybe somebody uh, backed up into something or what they did. But I could see the original uh, red oxide primer all the way down at the bottom. At least I think it's original. This one I don't mind going upwards because it's an outside radius versus an inside radius. So that looks really good there. So, all right, I'm gonna let this side dry. I'm gonna clean my bonder spreader and then we're gonna go to the other side and sand the front of the other quarter panel.
just fiberglass right there that is not metal yet. Is that fiberglass? I think so, yes. So it's cutting down pretty good so far. A little bit of a screw up here. Um, my metal I welded in was a little bit down farther than it should have been. I mean, it's welded, it's solid, but I'm gonna have to kind of float that out with a little bit of body filler there. It happens. Um, not much you can really do about it at this point. I'm not gonna cut it all back out and fix it. It'll be fine. But this is all fiberglass still, no metal yet. hit metal there all this is just fiberglass showing through I'm not going to sand it any farther than that um it's starting to feel flat that feels high to me i'm gonna have to tap that lightly down with the hammer i could definitely feel it bumping up like that so i need to fix that and what that probably is caused from is when i made this curve and i kind of just hand bent it probably had a little bit of a kink or something right there when i when i made that little gradual curve with it so that just needs tapped in a little bit high right here that just needs tapped in but as, as you guys can see there is not inches of body filler like some people like to comment and say bondo buggy and stuff um it's definitely not i mean there's not a ton of filler on here what am i going to have an eighth inch of filler when i'm done maybe a hair more i mean that's a totally acceptable you know um I've seen cars with half inch of Bondo. I've, I've taken one of these things and sunk it into the car. Well, heck, I did it on the other side on this one and it went in over a half inch. And you know, that could have been in the car for 20 years and it still held up. The only reason why it came out is because I ground it out. But uh, yeah, I mean, see, sounds like metal still. As my finger bleeds sounds the same as up top so clearly there's not a ton of filler on there so all right i'm gonna uh blow this off i'm gonna sand up here a little bit i got this edge with the da i forgot to drill a hole here we need to drill a hole for the uh molding clip 
And I wanna do that before I primer, so that primer gets on the inside of that. So I need to sand up here real quick. I'm just gonna do that off camera. I'm probably gonna use a piece of 80 grit. I have some 80 grit DA paper, but it's uh, Velcro backed. And um, what I'll probably do is just wrap it around that round block and just hold it with my hand on each side and hit this down with some 80 grit. Cause that 180 took way too long on that other side to, to bring it down. And you really want to cut this down quickly with the lower grit sandpaper flattens it out a little bit easier and then somebody had put um goo in these holes because the the molding from here up was riveted on i ground the rivets down there's rivet there 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 so they had riveted the molding back on when they apparently bashed it against whatever they did and just now talking about those there's a dent right here right here is there, there's a dent so I'm going to grind that out, and we're going to fill that in, too. So let me sand. Actually, I could feel it down here. See? Right here, it's going like that. It's bulging down because this was hit in so hard here. Knocked it in here, bulged it out here. Now, I do have a stud gun. I could technically grind this down, weld the stud there, and start pulling it with my hammer, slide hammer. Um, but I've noticed, especially on a line like this, on these old cars, this metal don't want to budge. I'll end up ripping that stud off the metal before I pop it out enough. Um, so it's just going to be easier for me to just tap this back in right here and just put a little filler on there. So, all right, let me get that sanded down over there. And boy, I hope it doesn't start raining. It's looking like it's going to rain. But all right, let me uh, keep going and I'll come back. Let me just show you real quick. I took a piece of Velcro grit, uh, Velcro 80 grit, wrapping it around this. And watch how much quicker this will cut. It feels awesome. I'll probably hit it with some 180 just to feather out these paint edges a little bit. And then, like I said, since we're gonna, there's a dent right there. Double steel, I can't get to it. There's a little dent right here. So I'm gonna have to grind the metal right here and we'll put a little filler there as well. But, um, and that could have happened when I welded that. It could have uh, just popped that. I mean, I've, I have seen that happen before. I didn't notice it, but it definitely has a little bit of a divot right here. Good thing I saw that now, but you know, that's another benefit of uh, filler priming twice is I'll catch stuff like that. So, all right, I'm going to let me grab my hammer. I'm gonna knock in these metal spots real quick. doesn't take a ton of force. Okay, that feels good. All right, I'm gonna uh, grind down a couple spots that I need to grind down. I'm gonna go ahead and put a coat of filler on this. I'm not gonna show me putting another coat of Bondo on the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these two spots filled in. That back there actually looks pretty good. Once again, there was a little bit of body work done back here. And uh, there was some paint peeling, so I sanded it down. But once again, it's steel down there, so I don't think any of the rear parts of this car were cut at any point. I think they were just, uh, who knows? You know, like I said, could have been a dent. Could have been, who, who knows? I mean, I don't, I don't know what it was, but clearly uh, you could see the original red oxide primer at the bottom and stuff. Whatever they did before they painted it, they did a little bit of something. I can see a little bit of filler, so probably some dings or dents. So, all right, let's get this another coat. Once I get this coated, we're gonna jump back over to the passenger side, sand those two spots down. See if you, um, this is where I like to do multiple panels at a time. Usually I try to just concentrate on one, 
but um, two is always better than one in my opinion. More than two at a time is too much because you start forgetting what you need to do to each panel. Um, but when you're doing two, you can at least get the filler on this side while it's setting up. You can go on the other side and work on that. Once you're done working on that, you can come back over to this side because at that point, this side's dry. So, all right, let me get this coated. I'm going to blow it off, get it coated, grind down that spot that has that dent there. And I think there was something over here I needed to grind down to. I'll have to look it over because I've been talking and I forgot. Oh, that dent where that molding goes. And I actually have to tap this out right here. That's the nice thing about these old cars is metal's so thick that when you start tapping it in, it actually stays in. Some of these new cars, you'll tap it a couple times and then the whole panel will cave in on you. You know, and then it'll pop back out like a like a pop can. So, all right, I'm going to get these coated up. Okay, before I hit this with the mud buster one last time, I'm going to do this part first. And I'm going to bring it down to here, sanding wise. And then I'll hit the mud buster because then I can keep the mud buster flat. You know what I mean? Just kind of go like this and roll it and not get it into this area here. This Because this feels really good right now because I used the Bondo spreader and I bent it into that corner like that. And it doesn't really feel wavy at all. So let's hit it down, knock it down. Feels pretty good there. So let's hit it with the mud buster now. <coughs> Turn this thing down a little bit. Things cruising.
pretty good. That's just fiberglass right there. We gotta sand that edge down. Got a little tiny, tiny dimple there. And one little one there. See if I can get those out. got it out so the key with the sander is you got to keep it flat i could have got that out a heck of a lot quicker if i just kind of went at an angle at it but then i would have made a divot in the panel so now it's nice and flat so now i need to get the rest of this rocker over here I have a little dimple here where I tapped in the metal too far so that'll get just a little bit of that glazing putty right there so now I'm gonna clean up these edges here off camera um, that's all stupid nonsense work um, let's sand this curve real quick sat in the mud oh well get a knockdown.
that's pretty good there. Got to feather it out here a little bit more. Okay, so that's pretty much done. So I just need to make a little bit of glazing putty for that little dink, dink, ding there. And then this down here, I'm just gonna hit it with my regular DA sander with 80 grit and knock that down. That'll be plenty fine way down there. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this side. I'm gonna finish sanding it and hit it with 180 grit. And then this side's gonna be ready for a primer. Um, and then we need to go over to the driver's side and get that finished up. Okay, I'm doing what I did on the other side, knocking this curved area down first. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's get this spot real quick first. Need a little bit more right there which is fine because i didn't fill in that nick on the other side yet and i accidentally hit this a little bit so i gotta feather that back out you know what that welds a little bit high there i'm gonna have to grind this weld down a little bit put a little bit of filler here and a little bit right there let's see what this
Okay, I'm gonna finish sanding this off camera. It looks like it's gonna sand good. Um, I got a couple little spots to put a little bit of filler. I'm not gonna video that. I'm gonna get the rest of these little couple spots touched up, get this finished up, and then we'll put some primer on this. Okay, I mixed up a little bit of epoxy primer here. What I'm gonna do is I put a wheel bag in on, and I'm just gonna hold a piece of cardboard up just so I don't get any of it on the interior. This is a epoxy primer. And I forgot to put my mask on. Luckily, uh, blowing away from me right now, but I will I'll probably just put on a paper mask. worried about that tailpipe. It's all rusted out. Okay, I'll get this gun rinsed out, come back, we'll put some filler primer on. Okay, I have a full cup of 2K primer. I'm going to spray as many coats as this cup will let me. I'm not going to video at all, just going to do the first one real quick. As you can tell or see, there's really no overspray with this stuff. Very, very minimal.
Okay, I'm going to spray the primer until I run out and then we'll come back and take a look at it. Okay, I put three heavy coats on. It doesn't look too bad at all, um, but the uh, guide coating and block sanding will tell it all. So, all right, that's going to end this video, guys. Um, I will not have a car video out tomorrow. Um, tonight, I'm probably going to have one out working on the basement. Tomorrow, I am going to hang the Christmas lights on the house because it's supposed to be another nice day like it is today plus let this dry because it's going to sit outside and it's going to go down to like 50 degrees tonight so let it sit a day or two before i block it down and then uh probably thursday night or friday what's tomorrow thursday probably friday night or saturday morning i'm going to paint the hood and trunk lid for this car and the front uh the front uh windshield wiper cowl um, and then I got to uh, get up here and I'm just going to wire wheel the motor down, wire wheel this frame up a little bit, clean it up a little bit and uh, repaint it black and orange. It's not going to look perfect, but it'll look better than it does now. So uh, we are getting there. We are getting close to having this thing painted. So, all right, guys, that's going to end this video. Thanks for watching. If you guys are like what you're seeing, please like and subscribe. Any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Other than that, I will see you guys later.